Uh, welcome back. I hope uh, by this time you already familiar with with definition and terminologies. Next, this le this lecture will cover the classification and characteristics of weed. Uh, some fundamental concepts that I hope you can grasp at this at the end of this lecture, and I also hope that you will you will learn uh, some. This is our objective that I hope you will learn from this uh, lecture. This table shows uh, the families of the world's worst weed. There are a total of 100, 138 sp uh, species, wheat species from these 12 families. Uh, the percentage here, the 27, 43, and 68, uh, uh, actually, uh, approximately from 205 total species from the 59 families. So here we have 12 plus another 47 uh, families that have at least three species or less wheat species. From this table, we can see that these three families comprise of the major wheat species family, which has more uh, and, and the, the, the families that has more than uh, four species comprising 68% of the total wheat species li listed. So, on taxonomical level, weeds can come from various families and any species can become a weed. So, how are they classified? Other common or less systematic classification methods for weeds are based on plant type, habitat, life history and relatedness to crop. Knowledge of classification is important because a plant's accessory, length of life, the time of year during which it grows, etc., etc., provide clues about management methods most likely to succeed. First, the plant type. The type of plant a general botanical group is an essential bit of knowledge but not very useful as a complete classification system. It is important that we know whether a weed is a fern, sage or cypressy, grass, a broadleaf, woody, etc. etc. You should not begin to attempt control or try to understand weedy behavior until this is known, until the, you, know, you know about the plant type of the weed. Next, is classification based on habitat. Most weeds are almost exclusively identified with their habitat. The most important uh, is weeds that occur in the cropland because they are disturbing nature directly to human needs. Irrigated crops uh, such as rice are highly disturbed by aquatic weeds. This also include la lakes, uh, stream, river and even ocean. Can you give me how weeds really affect a cropland, rangeland, uh, forest and aquatic habitat? What are environmental weeds and what are parasitic weeds? Another way to classify weeds is based on their life history. I hope you guys already familiar with plant life history. I don't want to explain in details what annuals, what biennials and what perennials are. Basically, a plant's life history determines the kind of cropping situations in which it might be a problem and what management methods are likely to succeed. The next class classification is more suited to agriculture. In agroecosystems, most wheat are different species than uh, the crops grown or what we call as heterospecific. Uh, such as corn for lamb squatters, pigweed, giant foxtail. In rice, we have banyak grass, yellow nusage, jungle rice, etc. etc. However, some wheat species share similar genus, and some even species share the same species with the crop, what we call as corn specific or corn generic. These species are very close taxonomically 
and genetically with the crops, making the control become even harder. Whatever kills the wheat most probably will kill the crop. So, for example, Johnson grass. This is a wheat species. Uh, sorghum halapensi is a sorghum is the crop, and the so, sorghum halapensi or Johnson grass is the wheat for the sorghum. Wild oats is the wheat for the oat, and weedy rice is the wheat in the rice cultivation system. So this is a corn specific. They are same species. This is how bad weedy rice infestation in the rice field. We will have a field trip to rice field to see how bad the, infest the infestation yourself. Agriculture, especially in developed countries, is basically based on monoculture that thrives in a disturbed habitat, which is the crop land, which at the same time also thrive in disturbed habitat and produce an abundance of vegetative growth of seed that in most cases are not useful to human or we do not choose to use them. The questions are, why is, uh, why is that same plants that thrive in disturbed habitats or are crops and some are weed? What is that makes some plants capable of growing where they are not desired? Why are they difficult to control? Why are their modes of interference and survival? The most consistent trait of weedy species is not related to their morphological or taxonomical relationship. It is, as Becker noted, their ability to grow well in habitat disturbed by human activity. These are some of the weedy characteristics listed by Baker. Not, not all weeds have all potential undesirable characteristics, but in addition to growing in disturbed habitats, all have some of the following characteristics. Pause this video and try to understand each of all characteristics. I hope from this lecture you have already understand on how weeds are classified and the weedy characteristics. As your homework, think about these questions and we will discuss this in class.